Good morning, CCOD. Are you guys ready to give God praise this morning? Come on and rest on your feet. Come on and rest on your feet. And let's just bless, come on, let's just begin to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Let's begin to just offer up a praise to him this morning. Let's tell him how great he is. Let's tell him how wonderful he is. Let's tell him how amazing he is. God, we lay every burden at your feet this morning. Those of us who came in heavy, heavy laden, God, we're worried. We stress, God, we lay it at your feet this morning. God, because we know that you are the rock. You are the rock of our salvation, God. And we can run to you and be safe, God. For your hand, God, your hand of protection, God. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. We pray that you would allow us to be used by your glory, God. Use us for your glory, Jesus. Let us not be seen, God. Let us not be heard, God. But let them only see and hear you today, God. Let them hear your voice, God. To feel your presence, God. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome today. You're welcome today. God, you're welcome. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. Move by your Spirit, God. We need a fresh word from you. Saturate this atmosphere, God. So that they can hear you and see that they can be healed, set free, and delivered, encouraged, God. Let them feel you, Jesus. Yes, God. God, we need you. We need you. We need more of you. We need more of your presence, God. More of your anointing, God. More of your spirit, God. More of your peace, God.
trust. It's in the rock. Yeah. All my trust. It's in the rock. It's in the rock. It's in the rock. His name is. And there's no need to worry, cause the rock has never failed. Yeah. Say the rock has never failed. Yeah. Anybody believe that day? Say the rock has never failed. Your mama may have failed you. Your daddy may have failed you, but he's Jesus. Yeah, say it again. Rock has never failed. The rock has never failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We stand in the creed and declare that his name is Grandma used to say it. Say, I am under the rock. Yes, the rock is higher than Jehovah High. I am under the rock. Go tell my enemy. I am under this rock. His name is you understand that one? Let's say it again. Say, I am under, I am under that rock. Yeah, the rock, the rock is higher than Jehovah hide me. Jehovah hide me. I am under this I rock, under God. Rock. He covers me day in and day out. I am under I am the rock. Under the rock. Let it go. We about to let it go, but you're not letting it go. His name is. Can we know music? Say, I will. Lift your voice, Zion. Lift your voice, Zion. I will Lift your voice, Zion. I will.
We didn't come to sing to y'all. I will trust say in the wild say. I will trust say. We declare it. Yes. We lift our worship to you. His name is You got it, Zion. Can we do it one more time? Lift your worship, I will trust. You sound beautiful in the rock. You sound amazing. I will trust in the rock. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Shout hallelujah. We trust you even more. I don't know about you, but I feel a little better. I don't know about you, but my trust is in him. I trust you, Jesus. I lean on you, God. Yes. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you expecting God to do something great this year? Come on, do you believe God will show up and show out this year? That this is the year of overflow? That's the word from our pastor, right? That this is the year of overflow. So I ask you, where is your faith? Do you believe? Yes. Eyes haven't seen. The kind of blessing, the kind of blessing that's about to fall on me. Yes. Come on. Because victory is here. Yeah. Kick defeat out the door. God's doing a new thing. Yeah. Get ready for all. I'm getting ready to see
much from you, God. We need a word. Just a word from you, God. We need a word. And we need a word. One last time from the top. Say we are here. We are here. So come and do. Come and do. Come and do. Come and do. Set our hearts to you. showed how mighty he is 
It showed how much he can move on their lives today. Yeah, yeah. God, he, he also, there's certain miracles that he's done. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Do you guys remember that Lazarus was in the grave for four days? He was dead already, but God raised him up from the dead. How much more? How much more can you believe today? He woke up Tabitha today. He woke Tabitha up this morning because Tabitha was dead. But he told her, rise. He told her to arise. He called her by your name. He's calling you by your name this morning. He's telling you that your situation will get better. He's telling you to put your trust in him. He's telling you to just place all your hope in him today because he's the God that moves, because he's the almighty God, and there is no other God but, but him. Put your hands together this morning. Praise God. for the word today because the presence of the Lord is in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, I just want to welcome you all. Welcome to Corona Church of the Open Door, the fastest growing church in all of the world for the glory of God. How many believe that? Amen. Our mission here at this church is to make disciples out of all men for Christ's sake. Amen. I just want to go over, um, I, at this time, I'm sorry, I would like to acknowledge any first-time visitors. If it's your very first time here, if you could just please raise your hand. We would just like to give you a card, um, and if you could just put your information on it, and we would just keep you updated on the events that we have going on at this church. Keep your hand raised, mighty man of God, and then we're just going to give you a card. Um, we just don't take it lightly that you're here this morning, so thank you for joining us. And thank you, beautiful ladies, for joining us this morning. All right, so we don't just worship on Sunday because we don't just eat on Sunday, amen? So on Monday mornings, we do have prayer with Pastor Fred at 5.30 a.m. It's Mountain Moving Monday. So please uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Tuesday night, we have Tuesday night through the scriptures with Pastor Fred as well. And that's at 7.30 on the same avenues on YouTube and Facebook. So please share. You can share the link. You can... Um, you know, with your coworkers, your friends, your family, um, it'll be encouraging, trust me. We are also a bilingual church, so if you know anybody who speaks Spanish, uh, please invite them out, because we have, cause we have um, interpreters here, and we also have a Spanish ministry that we are doing twice a month. We are holding Bible study twice a month. That we're holding twice a month. Um, so we just had Bible study on Wednesday. Just take just a quick note. It is taught in English but translated into Spanish. So if you don't speak Spanish, you can still come to Bible study. Amen. Because it's in English and it's awesome. So we just had it on this past Wednesday. It was awesome, awesome, huh, Pastor Miriam? Yes. And it's held at Pastor Miriam's house. Um, for more information, you can see her or you can call the church office. Um, so we won't have it again until the 27th, so um, the week after next, amen? So just put that in your mental notes. Um, the men's gathering we normally do every Saturday, uh, the last Saturday of every month. However, this month is Easter weekend, so we're going to postpone until next month. So it'll be held on April 27th. So guys, get ready. Put that in, your, in the back of your head. Um, put it on your calendar that we are going to do um, the men's gathering next month in April, okay? Uh, we, are, uh, we are on our last little days of our 40-day fast. Amen. How's everybody doing? Yes. It's been a blessing. Um, so just keep up the good work. Today is, um, is a free day, so enjoy your friends and family today. Uh, you know, don't go too crazy because, you know, you don't want to feel sick or nothing, okay? Amen. So we do have Easter coming up. It's in two weeks from today. Um, so get excited. We have a special service planned. Uh, we also have our Easter flyers. We, Pastor Fred is asking each person to take five flyers on your way out 
this morning. And uh, the ushers will have those ready. And there's also some flyers on the Connect booth. So please spread the word. Um, pass them out. Pass them out in the community um, and also to your, uh, your coworkers, anywhere you go. But please get the word out. Amen. Because we're expecting to pack the house out that morning. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have free food. We're going to have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. Uh, we are going to have Easter Bunny. Like, it's going to be nice. So you know how we do it. <laughs> We're still accepting egg and candy no donations for the children's ministry. Um, so please see DeToya next door if you want to donate. Uh, our baptism is scheduled for April 7th. Um, so it's going to be the week after Easter. We're going to have our baptism. There's a sign-up sheet on the Connect booth outside. It's going to be held at 5 p.m. And that will be held at New Hope Church. Okay. So if you're interested, please sign up. We also have um, our Papusa fundraiser. So the fundraiser is for the women's conference. Yes. And uh, we just need to pre-order them so that way we can make them and have them ready for you. So if you want to order, the sign-up sheet is on the Connect booth as well. Um, so please put down what you're going to order. That way they can have it prepared and ready for you. I believe it's April 14th. You guys are going to bring the orders. Okay. Amen. So that's going to be our fundraiser for the women's conference. So please, please, if you don't, if you want more information, you could talk to Yesenia. But they are delicious, and they are homemade by her and her mother and her family. I think all of you guys. <laughs> Amen. So thank you for doing that. And with that, we would like to wor continue worship with the Pastor Miriam and with our tithe. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We all will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. So we're going to keep worshiping the Lord. Amen? We already, we have an awesome prayer team. You know, I love that. I love God. God, we are here for you to do what you have to do. Amen? We have to really, so um, I'm really not going to teach or tell you about the tie because, you know, as the people of God, we know what the tie is. Amen? If somebody does not know, can you raise a hand so I can tell you? It's a 10% of our earning. So uh, the Bible, the Bible has many, many um, verses that it teach about us what the tie is. But I was just going to talk about one verse because that really I was sad in here. You know, Lord, help me and bring me. So uh, in Mark, Jesus was teaching about a widow. You know, he was teaching about we didn't, he was kind of like serve, kind of like Jesus is here serving everybody. And he told this widow to give everything that she had. She has the last coin. Probably he was, she was not thinking if the church needed. Probably he wasn't thinking about that. But we can see it, what kind of heart that she had. Where was her heart? Did she give everything? Because, Lord, she's not giving the 10%. She's giving everything. So that's something that Jesus was teaching for us to learn. So now I say, Lord, I, I, I do want to have a heart like her. How we can have a heart, a generous, generous heart like this widow. The Bible, the Bible is, I can say God is so good. God loves us so much that he teaches us everything. If you have any doubt, any question, the Bible has the answer. So she gave because God gave hers. You know, and, 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 and uh, John 3, 16, it says he gave his only begotten son. Everything that he has. So this we don't learn from, from, from him. He gave everything that, we, that she has. So the Bible tells us that. And also, the Bible says in, um, in uh, Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 3, 9. It says, bring, bring all your earnings. Bring all your earnings to the church. So the tithe is given to God through the church. This is how we, we give to God. And you know, one of the things is God does not really need our money. He just want a heart of giver, a generosity heart. Because when you give, you open and you get ready for the blessings for tomorrow. You know, it, it's something that I, I wanted to say with the son. We say, you do what you have to do, Lord. And you know how God blesses. But I just want to tell you something a little bit about me. 
I'm from, I'm not from, I'm not from here, but probably you, you already know that. <laughs> I did not born in the USA. I'm from South America. I'm from Ecuador. My mother was a widow with seven children. My father died when she was 43 years old. She was kind of like, I think, 10 years, 10 years younger than me or something like that. And I can imagine in Ecuador, you know, I was a little girl full of dreams. And um, I just wanted to finish college. That was my dream. I never thought to learn another language. I never, I never thought to have a wonderful husband, kids, houses, and everything. And when they were singing, dreams you have not dreamed, ears they have not heard. And you know, and now when I was talking about this widow that give everything, I remember my mother. In our country, it's not a here. There's no welfare. There's no food stamps. You just, you just work. You just work. And I imagine my mom, probably, she prayed for us every day. I remember the last day before she, God called her to be there. I was in the hospital. And my mom says, Mom, good night, let's go tomorrow. The doctor will say, she goes, no, mija, no, daughter, let's pray. And I said, oh, my God, at this moment, I did not know Jesus. Like I do now. Like this widow woman knew. So I say, okay. My mother prayed for almost 45 minutes. Oh my God. And I was hearing, open my eyes, she's still praying. Hallelujah. And probably, probably my mother did not have the money. But she had a heart. She had a trust. She always was a giver. Probably you don't know me, but I love to give. Yes. I learned from that. Seven kids. And when she had rice and then somebody was hungry, she says, oh, bring it, I'm going to give it. And I was thinking, oh, my God, my place going to be less. Oh, my mom, why you do that? Why my mother? You know, what was struggle for me out there, it, it was the big lesson. Seeing her. Because one thing is you to know and one thing to see the style of life. If I had two pairs of shoes that somebody needed, she'd give it to them. And I was, mom, I hate my mom. Why she did that? She was a giver. Now I know that I know that I know. And she learned from God. She had the trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. So are you ready to gift? Hey, yeah. Giving Hallelujah. is to expect tomorrow your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's for you, not for Jesus. Hear things that you have not heard, eyes you have not seen, dream that you haven't dreamed. I'm a living, living, uh, how do you say, uh, testimony. Yeah. Jesus, so let's get ready and Hallelujah. get your heart like this woman and let's give to the Lord and receive your blessings tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Everybody needs an envelope? You all have an envelope? Put your hands together. Come on.
Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us continue to bless the Lord. Amen. And, and, and I, you know, I heard that if, um, if we don't bless him, that the rocks are crowd. And, and, and I don't want the rocks to crowd in my place, so I want to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the absence of our pastor, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we truly, we thank and praise God. I thank God for the opportunity, amen, that he's given me to um, come before you. Amen. And Pastor Fred Griffin is the head of this house. Amen. Amen. And I'm just here filling in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Truly, it's a blessing and a privilege. Amen. I don't take it lightly. Amen. Um, I don't take it lightly at all. And uh, I truly, I praise God for that opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to see what the Lord have today for us. Amen. Just um, we got to see what the Lord's going to say today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. I stand before you, Lord, as an empty vessel, asking you to speak through me, Lord, whatever you have for the people today. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God, praise God. Um, we're going to turn with me. Praise God. We're going to move on. How many minutes I got a total of? I'm going to try to finish this up. Okay. Okay. We're going to do this. Amen. I'm going to move quickly on this and hopefully we can get out a little early. I don't know, but turn with me to Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Amen. Exodus. Exodus 17. Amen. Turn with me there. Go down to the 13th verse. And it says this. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this from a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out 
the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, okay, Jehovah Nisi. Okay, that means the Lord is my banner. Amen. So uh, for a thought today, we're going to take it. The Lord is my banner today. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll see what the Lord have. Just to give you just a little background, let me give you an introduction. I'm going to read something here. I'm going to give you an introduction of what's going to take place here. Amen. Um, it says, we are introduced to the Hebrew name Jehovah Nisi. Okay. In the story of the Israelites and Moses while wandering in the wilderness. Moses was the first one to call upon the Lord Jehovah Nisi. Amen. When Israel faced the Amalekites in battle at Rephidim, it wasn't with overwhelming force. An experienced army or the best commander. It was the tribe of herdmen escaping uh, slavery in Egypt and traveling uh, uncertainly to a promised land that have not been uh, been there for over 400 years. They were traveling through the land of fierce fighting people. They traveled with women, children, herds, and all that they possessed. Okay? The battle was for survival, for hope, and for a future. But they traveled with something else too. Some things, something else that no other nation on earth had. They had a pillar of fire, a cloud of smoke, and the very presence of God. Israel did not fight its battle alone. No matter how inexperienced or overmatched they were, they were never the underdog. No matter how desperate they felt, they were never at loss. The great general, Jesus Christ, God, the perfect protector, the Lord was with them. The very name used in scripture is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banter. Moses experienced both physical and spiritual victory with the Lord banner waving over the battle. Just a little introduction, just so I don't have to go all the way in detail, just giving you a little bit there of what took place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now turn it with me to, um, still in Exodus, go up to. Uh, verse number eight. We're going to start there. The Lord, this was kind of a little different. I thought it was going to come a certain way, but the Lord started speaking to me and it came a little different. Amen. Okay. So looking at verse number eight, it says, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim, if I'm pronouncing that right. Now I looked up that and that means a place of rest, a place that they visit, the Israelites visit, it's, it's a place of rest. The valley of Rephidim is, if you look it up, it's a place of rest. Now, so these Amalek's, it's kind of strange. So they go and attack the people of God, and the place is called a place of rest. I know somebody must have said, Captain, look, I don't know if we should do this right now, they in a place, uh, uh, you know, these are God's people. They in a place of rest. Amen. So, so that was kind of, that caught my attention. So I looked up, you know, so a place of rest. So in Hebrews, Hebrews 4 and 9, it says, there remain therefore a rest for the people of God. There's a place that we can be in the midst of our trial. There's a rest for us. There's a place where God will put you at a rest. Amen. And then in Deuteronomy 12, 10, it says, but when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and we give you a rest from all your enemies, there's a rest for us. That's a safety and there's a rest. It is, you know, it's the Lord use some animals to show me this rest. There's a rest in him. He used my dogs at home to show me about this rest. Listen here. 
I have, we always had this uh, uh, rosin dog, it's a, it's a uh, multi-poodle mix. Then last year, Annette's father passed away, and he had an English bulldog. So I really didn't want him, but I, I, we took him in, you know? But, but, but he became, you know, I mean, he became a part of the family. So I took him in. And this bull, it is, if you know, bulldogs, and, and, and the Lord was, I was studying, the Lord showed me this. Bulldogs don't have a fear of, they might fear of other animals. They don't have a fear of other animals. And, and then we have a little dog that's a poodle. Now, when I take them for a walk, okay, the bulldog, the one way we walk, this, this other family, they got pit bulls. And when they're walking, when, when we're walking down that way, the bulldog, he looks at them. <laughs> then he just turns his head, don't change his pace, he don't change, he don't show no fear, no nothing, and he's walking there. But then the little dog only weigh about 10 pounds, Lily, you know, it's a, it's a poodle, okay, a multi-poodle mix. He would normally go and come to me and have to pick him up. Now, since he's gotten his big brother, <laughs> listen, look, look, listen at this. Since he got his big brother, he's walking, and, and now when we walk by there, Lily is like, we bad. You know, so Lily normally would get scared, but guess what? He knows, she knows that her big brother is there, and guess what? He's at, she's at rest. She's not worried, although, they, I mean, there's some fears, and I'm quite sure the pit bulls will eat them both up, but, 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 but he's, but she's not showing, because now she have faith and her big brother. And the same way when we're going through, we need to have faith in God that we can rest. Yeah, we're going to go through trials. Yes, we're going to go through things. But guess what? We can be at rest. We can still be not saying we're not concerned. Yes, we're concerned. But there's a rest that he gives you in him. And the Lord showed me that through the dogs. And I was, oh, I said, my goodness. So that, 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 that was beautiful. Amen. And then. And then in, in Hebrews, oh, so, so I already read that already about the safety. But then we go over to, let's go over to verse number nine. Okay. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Okay. My goodness. Now you notice that he told him to choose out some men. Listen at this. These men were not warriors. These were farmers and herders and 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 they didn't know anything about that. So that's why he told them to choose out. Okay. He told them to choose out some men so they wasn't already trained to fight. But God used them. Amen. Okay, so he told them to choose out men. These were not warriors. Okay, and then he told, as we go down there, he told, um, he told them to take his rod. Okay, God, so, so Moses took his rod with him. And let's talk about the rod a little bit. The rod of God, which is Moses' rod, there was a lot of miracles done with that rod. You know, you, I mean, he done it, the part in the sea. A lot of things took place with that rod. What do the rod, okay, mean? Moses always had his rod with him. The rod carried authority, power. The rod, the rod Moses took with him to the top of the hill which was Moses' rod, but the rod of God. What is our rod today? Faith in God, believing on his word. The rod is the presence of God, the same way Moses never let go of the rod of God, we can never let go the word of God. Because see, that's what we have now, the word of God. When we are facing battles, the rod symbolized protection. The rod symbolized protection. Look, in Psalms 23 and 4 is what it says. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. That means thy rod and thy staff protect me. Okay? 
And then in, in Psalms 3 and 3, it talks about it, it being a shield, a protection. Amen? Praise God. So the rod is a protection. Okay? Now, as we go there, let's go down a little bit further. So that's a protection. Let's go down. Okay, verse number 10. We're going to skip some of this. but So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Number 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hands down, okay, his hands, Amalek prevailed. Now, what's going on here? Let's see. Moses' army, okay. Okay, Moses' arms were raised. See? As long as he kept his arms up, okay? So when he kept his arms up to the Lord, they were prevailing, okay? Moses' arm was raised to the Lord. As long as Moses kept his arms raised in worship, as they were talking about, as Darion was talking about that today, and, and, and Israel were winning. Whenever we were facing, we can lift our hand and worship the Lord. Lifting means as... Darion mentioned in praise and worship. Lifting means surrender to God or an act of praise. Lifting up your hands in the sanctuary. Amen. And bless the Lord. Psalms 134 tells us to lift our hands. And what we got to understand is that when the praise team or, or, or the elite that's up is telling you to lift your hands, it's not he just wants you to raise your hands. They're ushering in the spirit of God. There's something in when you lift your hands to God, when you lift yourself, you're surrendering yourself to God. Amen? There's something there when you're lifting your hands to God. You're surrendering. 1 Timothy 2 and 8a says, I desire therefore that the men praise everywhere lifting up hands. Holy hands. There's a blessing. There's power. That's ushering the Holy Spirit in when you're lifting up hands. When we lift up our hands to heaven, okay, it presents everything we are, everything we have done, and everything we have to God. When you are facing a battle, how about us lifting up our hands to the Lord? Amen? All right. In Psalm 6, the three and four says, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. The Lord wants you to lift you want up your hands. He wants you to praise him. See, that, that lifting is a surrendering. It's giving your all. Whatever it is, you're giving your all to him. And that's what he wants us to do. Amen? Praise God. I remember, I remember once I was very sick. I was very sick, and I was so sick, I remember lifting my hands. I didn't have words to say. I don't know if anybody ever been that sick where you don't have any words to say. But I remember lifting my hands to heaven. I remember surrendering myself to God. I remember saying, Lord, I'm giving you all. I'm giving you my all. I, I, Lord, this is, this is what I have for you, Lord. And, and, and in my mind, I, I said that there's no other help I know. I'm giving. I'm surrendering. See, when you get to a point and you're going through and you to surrender your all, I don't have no more options. When, when it comes to the point that the doctors can't help you no more, the judges can't help you no more, all you have is lifting yourself to Jesus, lifting your hands to Jesus and saying, Lord, I surrender my all to you. I have nothing else, Lord. If you withdraw thyself from me, what's going to happen to me? Lord, I give my all to you. Everything that's in me, Lord, I give it to you. Whether it, if, if it's something I'm not doing right, Lord, I give it to you. Lord, I, I give myself to you. And that's what lifting is. So whenever you see the praise team are telling you to lift your hands, they're not trying to just make you raise your hand. They want the Holy Spirit to come in because God came in. When I was at that sick point, God came in and healed my body. 
I got to my lowest point where I had nothing else but to lift my hands to heaven. That's all I had was to lift my hands to heaven. And God came in and healed my body. Hallelujah. And then guess what? God is no prospective person. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. I was sick unto death. I weighed 129 pounds. I didn't know if I was going to see the next day or not. But God came in and healed my body. I'm a witness to it. You stand into a witness that my God is a healer in the name of Jesus. But I had to give, but I had to surrender. I couldn't hold on to nothing else. I had to surrender and give my all to him. Everything I had, I had to give it to him. Lord, I surrender everything to you. I have nothing else. And guess what? Because guess what? Them doctors only know so much. They only know so much. And you got to hold on to that faith and don't waver. You got to hold on to that faith and don't bend. Lord, I give myself to you. I surrender everything I have, Lord, to you. If you don't do it, Lord, it can't be done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he healed me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's don't, you're not going to see the lifting of hands. Whenever you see him, tell you lift your hands. Go ahead and raise your hands because the Holy Spirit comes in. And you might not need it, but you lift your hands for somebody else. If you find that's fine, but you lift your hands for somebody else because we need the anointing in the building. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit in here for us to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see where I'm at here. Okay, going to, let's look at verse number 17. Uh, excuse me, no, excuse me. Excuse me, Exodus 17, verse number 12 now. Amen. Praise God. This is what I started this. I didn't know how the Lord was going to work on this. I had no clue what the Lord was going to do. Amen. But look at this. But Moses' hands was heavy. And they took a stone. Talk about Aaron and Hur. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hand, his arms, one on one side and one on the other. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Man, I'll show you what the Lord gave me on that. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, what do you want me to say on that? In other words, Moses' hands got heavy. Moses got tired. He got tired. I don't care who you are. I don't care bishop, whatever. You're going to get, we got times we get tired. Moses got tired. But Aaron and Hur came to his aid. One on one side. To hold him up, okay? One on one side, one on the other. Let's look at this. Let's, let, let, let's just, for one second, let's take our eyes off of Moses and let's see what God is doing there, okay? Uh, just for a minute. Now, Aaron and Hur, they became intercessors. You have to understand that. Standing in the gap, coming to the aid of Moses, we all, at a point in time of our life, going to need someone to stand in the gap for us. I don't care who you are. That's going to be a time that you're going to need someone to stand for you. When life battles get too heavy for you, guess what? You might need some help. You might appear to be strong, but guess what? We all need someone to stand for us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's like this. If I get tired, I get tired sometimes. This last year too been heavy for us. And I get tired. But guess what? There's somebody praying for me. There's someone standing in the gap for me. Amen. My brother, come here. Come here. Okay. This is what happened to us. This is what happened to us. Life get heavy. Things get hard. I don't care who you are. But this is what we do as saints of God. Because now I'm feeling tired. Moses was tired. He says, he, 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 
they had to help him up. But if I get, if I'm going down and, and I'm down here, spiritually I'm down. I'm down because this battle is too heavy for me. The things I'm going through with the children, with the family, with, the, with, 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 with all the different loved ones in the home, I, I, I'm, I've gotten tired. And we get tired, but now I have my brother to come behind me, amen, and he's going to help me up. See, he, right now, he's my intercessor. He's, he, he came to my aid because I needed some help. And saints of God, we have to come to each other's aid in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So important. So important. And Ezekiel 22 and 30 says, so I sought for a man among them who would make up the wall and stand in the gap for me. That's what Aaron was doing. They were standing in the gap for him. Amen. And then we look at Job. See, it's so important. We have an intercessory team at church. And there's a group of them that when something go on, that whole group get that call, and they begin to pray. Amen? And, and when, we, when there's a group of people praying for you, guess what? It builds a hedge of protection around you. Look, look at Job 1 and 10. It says this. Satan said unto the Lord concerning Job, has not thou made a hedge about him? When you intercede, and we stand in the gap and help each other. There's a protection. There's a protection when we, in, we, when we intercede and we stand in the gap. There's a hedge. We need, see, there's times you can have so much on you, you can't pray for yourself. And this is when the saints of God, this is our job as saints of God to stand and pray for one another. Amen? And Because he said there, because Satan said, don't you have a hedge around him? When you get together and you praying for someone and, 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 and putting them up before the Lord, that's the protection of hedge around them. And guess what? When that hedge is there, it disallows Satan to come in. Because if I'm already down, I'm already uh, 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 depressed. What you want me? Oppressed and possessed? So, so that, that hedge around them will put a protection there. Because when we when we get down, uh, uh, that the enemy are attacking. When you're down, the enemy is attacking, and we need that help. And saints of God, that's what we do with one another. Amen. We put that as a hedge of, of protection around. We got, and when we intercede for one another, we got to do that. Amen. We got to do that. Praise the Lord. We got to intercede for one another. Amen. Standing in the gap, okay, for someone. We need to do that. We got to do that for each other. Saints of God, that's, that, that's required of us that we stand. Because if you don't stand, when somebody's going to have to stand for you. We have to help one another. We got to help one another. God have called, God have called us men. I ain't going to talk about the lady, but I know, the, I know the men. I'm a man. I know, I know what God is saying. For us men to stand in the gap for each other. Let us stand because Satan wants to destroy the male figure. And if we don't stand up with each other, Satan's going to overtake us. The Lord is saying for the men of God that we stand in the gap for each other. That we hold each other up in the name of Jesus. And you should be able to go to your brother and tell him something in that business is staying right there. But yet we praying. And stand in the gap because Satan wants to take out our men. He don't want our men to reach their potential. He's taking them and we have to stand. We got to stand for him. We got to stand. Ladies, I know I'm not leaving you out, but God has spoke for the men. For right now, he told me to say, the men, God, we got to stand together. We have to hold each other up. The same way Aaron and Hurd held up Moses' arm, one on each side. We got to do that to our brothers. We got to do that. We got to hold each other up. We don't want to see a brother fall. We don't want to see a brother go back. We want to lift him up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Things do get heavy. Things do get hard. Things do get hard. True story. A friend of mine called me. and We were talking on the phone. 
And I, anyway, I ran into him. He was telling me a story. So important that we listen. So important that we pay attention to each other. Women and men, but I'm talking to the men. The, the one brother, friend of mine, he, his name is Jerry. And he was in the military, Marines, MP. And he was sharing with me that one of the brothers, you know, it, it kind of had a little group there. And it was the brothers, you know, both black brothers and stuff. And they, one got moved to another area, whatever happened. And the one brother that was an MP saw the other brother accidentally get shot. You know, and he got killed because they, I guess they didn't clear the weapon right. They, they was being careless, but nothing happened to the guy that shot him. I don't know exactly what happened. But anyway, time had passed, and my friend Jerry, uh, time had passed on, and my friend Jerry was telling me the guy, the, the one friend saw the other guy get shot, and it kind of bothered him a lot, you know. But anyway, time had passed on, and so later on, that friend that saw his other friend get shot, he saw him. I guess I don't know if they came in the same department. Something happened where they got to see each other a little bit more, and he, the guy would come and say, I need to talk to you. He said, okay, I'll get you. Another time come by, I need to talk to you. Okay, I'll get you. A couple of months go by, I need to talk. Man, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to get you. Same guy that saw his friend got shot. He was being oppressed while he was at the job. And he didn't want to be around guns anymore once he seen that other thing. But he shot two other gentlemen because they had oppressed him so much. And my friend was telling me that he felt bad because had he stopped and listened, it could have been a different outcome. You know? It could have been a different outcome. We have to have that spirit of discernment and, and know. And, and what we don't know, we don't know. But that's why we're talking now that that don't happen. So many times we brothers would we'll say, yeah, man, I'm going to call you, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you up, we're going to go, we're going to have a cup of coffee, we're going to go over this. When that person keeps saying that, you don't know that they want to share with you what they're going through. And if we don't, and, and, and sure, we all, we're busy. But you have to have that discernment and know when to let something else go. Because my friend, he, I don't know how long he suffered, but, but he felt like if he would have stopped and listened to him, because he was a higher-ranking officer, that that would have been a different outcome on that situation. But he kept busy doing what he was doing, both in the military, but he kept busy doing, doing what he was doing, so he never stopped to take our time, and then it was, it was too late. And you don't want that on your conscience, that I should have sit and talked to him. I should have sit and listened to him. Just listen for a little while. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's for us. And I pray for God to give me the spirit of discernment. I heard that um, I was talking to someone that knew Pastor Russell. And he was over there at, at um, what's the church he was at? Um, Crossroads. And, and I, they, they told me that Pastor Russell had a discernment. When people was walking up into the church, he would pull them aside and share with them because that person was going through that discernment that he had help many, many people because God gave him the spirit of discernment. So you coming in the church and, and, and so before they even got in, he's praying with them before they even got in the church. And I heard that about Pastor Russell. Amen. Praise God. So that spirit of discernment is so important. That spirit is good for all our sisters as well. You know, we all, we need that discernment. Amen. Praise God. If you have that discernment, you'll know sometime ahead of time what's going on in your household, especially when you got teenage kids or young kids, and that discernment will, will let you know what's going on in that house. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's see where we at. I'm almost wrapping it up here. Um, uh, where am I at now? Let me see. Um, okay, we're going to drop down. Let's kind of close it up. Okay. Um, and we're going to look at number 13 right quick, and it says, and Joshua, uh, they defeated Amalek with the edge of the sword. And then the Lord had told Moses to 
to go ahead and do this memory thing. So in number 15, it says, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, which is the Lord is my banner. Okay. So Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. It was a day of remembrance to remember. What does it mean for God to be our banner? When Moses named the altar, we knew it was with significant. We know it was for remembrance. What does it mean for God to be your banner today? Consider how a banner is used. Think about it. Banners are raised to celebrate and honor. Banners are hung from rafters in arenas, honoring champions, they, are, they, they adorn places of public to celebrate occasions of people who are deserve honoring. Amen? So we know a banner. We talk about the banner. What, what is the banner for? Okay? A banner is a, a visible. The whole point of a banner, it is to be seen. Okay? Think about the Lord now while I'm talking that. Okay? Unmistakable and unignorable. Banners are for those uh, uh, who raise them. They are acts of celebration, remembrance, or announcement. Amen. God is our banner. Amen. Banners are for those who see them. They are invitations and a gathering place. They summons, they call. They attract passerby. God is our banner. Amen. God is our banner. What are we supposed to be doing? Amen. God is our banner. It attracts passerbyers. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. God is our banner because we live to celebrate and honor his faithfulness to us. Shown in many ways. God is our banner because we remember all the deeds and his word graciously given unto us in scripture. God is our banner because we are the representation to the world. We are the representation of the world. If we don't tell it, the world's not going to know it. If you don't show it, the world's not going to know it. You might not be one that, that uh, uh, talk a lot. That's okay. But you can live the life. Amen? You can live the life that they question. It, it draws attention because they say, gee, you know, they're not doing this, what we doing. They, you, it draws attention. Amen? Okay, praise God. God is our banner because all of this is an invitation, a gravitation pull, a summons, a tug to any who would believe but do not know. You know, when, when, see, many people don't know exactly yet, but as we praise the Lord and we, and we witness, it, it's drawing them. It's a drawing thing. Okay? Amen. Praise God. It draws. Okay? The Lord... When Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner, he was creating a place of remembrance, a celebration of victory, an expression of thanks. He was making a declaration, one that followers of Jesus Christ can share today. We can share. The Lord is my banner, and we are the Lord's. Amen? Lift up our banner. Okay? Praise the Lord. We're going to lift up our banner to, so souls could be saved. If we don't lift our banner up, our standard, and, and, and speak about the Lord or, or share the Lord or live the life, you know, I can't, I can't be a banner, and we all guilty, but I can't be a banner if I'm going to live the same life as everybody else. It has to be a separation. Amen? Praise God. It has to be a separation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And then John 12, 32 says, And I, if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw men unto me. Jesus, if we lift up Jesus, we'll draw man. We're his banner. We're the banner. We're, there's no flag waving, but we his flag. We're that banner that's walking. We're walking banner. We go into the marketplace. We go into the different places. And, and, and I don't mean to talk about, look, Brother Russell, we would go to the car show. 
Me and Pastor Mike, we looking at the cars. Russell's over there witnesses people while we at the car shop. We try, I'm looking for this, just, hey man, look at this car right here. Russell over on the other side witnessing the people. Sharing wherever he go, he would share. And I'm not saying you have to be that way, but I'm just sharing what, what, I, what I notice about him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise God. And we're ending. Praise God. We're closing. Praise God. We're closing. Praise God. And it says, and if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men unto me. Let us help lift up Jesus. Let us help lift him up. Whatever your part is. We all got different parts. Whatever it is, let's lift him up. Young people in school, lift him up. You can do that. Wherever on your job, you can lift him up. You know, so many times it's hard. But I had to separate myself when I was on the job. And I remember when the men was doing certain things, I had to separate myself. Not to be different, but certain things they were doing that I had to separate myself from what they were doing. And, and I told this story in many, uh, um, there's times, you, you know, I don't know if you work with a, those that work with a group of people, sometimes guys, guys can get a little naughty there. And they used to bring magazines to work and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, they'd be over there and I know what's going on and they don't include me, but I want to go over there and see what's going on too. I want to look too, you know. But the Lord said, no, you don't need to be over there looking, you know. Because as soon as I go over there looking, they're going to say, oh, I thought you was a Christian. What's going on here? You know, but, but that was just something for me. I'm not saying for you, but that was for me. And so I had to separate myself. Yet they're still, you know, part of the, the workforce there. But yet certain things I had to separate myself. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And as we end, praise God, the Bible says that if there's anybody that need prayer today, you need someone to stand with you and help lift you up. If you need to be lifted up, you need someone to stand in the gap for you. We have praise leaders here. We have intercessors here. We have men and women of God here. If you need someone to stand with you and agree with you, amen, that you need that covering, you need that person to stand in the gap for you, you need that person to hold you up, if that's you, and don't matter what it is, if you need someone to stand with you concerning your children, or, or if you need them, we ask you now, praise God. At this time, as the praise team sing and praise God, if you need someone to stand with you, this is the time. And if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says, if thou confess with thy mouth, if thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Praise God. If you need someone to stand with you, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you need someone to stand with, praise team, intercessors, praise God. Hallelujah. Because we all have a time where the load get heavy. The load get heavy. If you need someone to be with you, stand with you, agree with you, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you need someone to stand with you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Have your way today, Lord.
make sure the saints of God make sure that as we're you know how we're so don't be selective when I know I'm going to say this sometimes when somebody need us one person to say hey give me a call yeah and another person say give me a call we tend to go to the person that have the most but the smaller guy not call it smaller but but those that don't that's not as important they might not be a bishop or whatever make sure your ears are listening because sometimes we i said we have a tendency to go to the one that's the higher up if they say give me a call Make sure you be make sure you're not selective and you hear what God is saying. Okay? Praise the Lord. This time. Give it up for Pastor Elder Sam.